you, as we mentioned, have an amazing podcast called Mindscape. It's, as I said, one of my favorite uh, podcasts, sort of both for your explanation of physics, which a lot of people love, and when you venture out into things that are beyond your expertise, <laughs> but it's just a really smart person exploring uh, even uh, questions like, you know, uh, morality, for example. It was very interesting. I think you did a solo episode and so on. I mean, there's a lot of really interesting conversations that you have. What are, what are some, from memory, amazing conversations that pop to mind that you've had? What did you learn from them? something that maybe changed your mind or just inspired you or just what through this whole experience of having conversations, what stands out to you? Uh, it's an unfair question. It's totally unfair, but that's okay. That's all right. right. Um, you know, it's often the ones, I feel like the, the ones I do on physics and closely related science or even philosophy ones are like, I know this stuff and I'm helping people learn about it. But I learn more from the ones that have nothing to do with physics or philosophy, right? So talking to Wynton Marsalis about jazz or talking to a master sommelier about wine, talking to Will Wilkinson about partisan polarization and the urban-rural divide, mm -hmm. uh, talking to psychologists like Carol Tavris about uh, cognitive dissonance and, and how those things work. Scott Derrickson, who is the director of the movie Doctor Strange, I had a wonderful conversation with him where we went through the mechanics of making a blockbuster superhero movie, right? And uh, he's also not a naturalist. He's a he's an evangelical Christian, so we talked about the nature of reality there. Um, I want to have a couple more, you know, uh, discussions with highly educated theists who know the theology uh, really well, but I, but I haven't uh, quite arranged those yet. I would love to hear that. I mean, that's uh, how comfortable are you venturing into questions of religion? Oh, I'm totally comfortable doing it. You know, I did talk with Alan Lightman, who is also an atheist, but he, he, you know, he is trying to rescue the sort of spiritual side of things for atheism. And I did talk to very vocal atheists like Alex Rosenberg. So I need to talk to some, I've, I've talked to some religious believers, but I need to talk to more. How have you changed through having all these conversations? You know, part of the motivation was I had a long stack of books that I hadn't read and I couldn't find time to read them. And I figured if I interviewed their authors, it <laughs> forced forced me to, to read them, read right? That. And that's that has totally worked, by the way. Now I'm annoyed that people write such long books. I think I'm still very much learning how to be a good interviewer. I think that's a skill that, uh, you know, I, I, I think I have good questions, but, you know, there's the, the give and take that is still, I think I can be better at, like I wanna offer something to the conversation, but not too much, right? right. I've had the, conversations where I barely talked at all, and I had conversations where I talked half the time, and I think there's a happy medium in between there. So I think, I remember listening to, without mentioning names, some of your conversations where I wish you would have disagreed more. Yeah. As a listener, <laughs> it's more fun sometimes. It, well, this is a, that's a very good question because, you know, my, everyone has an attitude toward that. Like yeah. some people, are really there to basically give their point of view yeah. and the their their guest is supposed to you know respond accordingly i i want to sort of get my view on the record but i don't want to dwell on it when i'm talking to someone like david chalmers who i disagree yeah. with a lot you know i want to say like here's why i disagree with you um but you know, I want, I'm, we're here to listen to you. Like I, I have an episode every week and you're yeah. only on once a week. Right. Yeah. So I have an upcoming um, podcast episode with Philip Goff, who is a wow. much more yeah. dedicated panpsychist. And yeah. so there we really get into it. I think that I probably have dis disagreed with him more on that episode than I ever have with uh, another podcast guest, but that's what he wanted. So it, it worked very well. Yeah. Yeah. That kind of debate structure is uh, beautiful when it's done right. Like when you're uh, when you can detect that the intent is that you have fundamental respect for the person, yeah, that and that's for some reason it's super fun to to, to listen to when two really smart people are just arguing and but, sometimes lose their shit a little bit if I may say well, so. Well, <laughs> there's a, there's a fine line because I have zero interest in bringing. I mean, like, I mean, maybe maybe you 
implied this, I have zero interest in bringing on people for whom I don't have any intellectual respect. Like ah, gotcha. I constantly get requests to like, you know, bring on a flat earther or whatever and really slap them down or a creationist. Right. Like I have zero interest. Yeah. I, I'm happy to bring on, you know, a religious person, uh, yeah. a believer, but I want someone who's smart and, and can act in good faith and can talk, not a charlatan or a lunatic, yeah. right? So I will only, I, I will happily bring on people with whom I disagree, but only people from whom I think the audience can learn something interesting. So let me ask, the idea of charlatan is an interesting idea. You might be more educated on this topic than me, but there's um, there's folks, for, for example, who argue various aspects of evolution, sort of try to approach and say that evolution, sort of our current a theory of evolution has many holes in it, has many flaws. And they argue that I think like Cambridge, Cam, Cambrian explosion, mm -hmm. uh, which is like a huge added variability of species doesn't make sense under our current description of evolution, the theory of evolution. Sort of, if you had to, were to have the conversation with people like that, how do you know that they're the difference between outside the box thinkers and people who are fundamentally unscientific and yeah. even bordering on charlatans. It's a great question. And you know, the further you get away from my expertise, the harder it is for me to really judge exactly yeah. those things. And I, you know, I'm, yeah, I don't have a satisfying answer for that one because I think the example you use of someone who, you know, believes in the basic structure of natural selection, but thinks that you know this particular thing cannot be understood in the terms of our current understanding of Darwinism, that's a perfect edge case where it's hard to tell, right? And uh, I would have to, I would try to talk to people who I do respect and who do know things, and I would have to, you know, given that I'm a physicist, I know that physicists will sometimes be too dismissive of alternative points of view. I yes. have to take into account that biologists can also be too dismissive of alternative points of view. So um, yeah. It's a tricky one. And Have you gotten heat yet? I get heat all the time. Like there's always <laughs> something. I mean, it's it's hilarious because I do have. I try very hard not to like have the same topic several times in a row. I did have like two climate change episodes, but they were from very different perspectives. But I, I like to mix it up. That's the whole point. That's why I'm having yeah. fun. And every time I do an episode, someone says, "Oh, the person you should really get on to talk about exactly that yeah. is this other person." Yeah. I'm like, "Well, I don't. But I did that now. Yeah. I don't want to do that anymore." <laughs> <laughs> well. Uh, I hope you keep doing it. You're inspiring millions of people, with your books, with your podcasts. Sean, it's an honor to talk to you. Thank you so much. Thanks very much, Lex.